Welcome to this full guide to productivity. I've been really looking forward to making this video. So my name's Owen, I'm a degree apprentice and I help people get degree apprenticeships in the engineering, technology and finance industries. It's a bit of a different video today. It's gonna be a long video, but we're gonna cover everything you need to know about productivity, how to level up your productivity. So why is productivity important? Well, with your degree apprenticeship applications, you're gonna to have to apply to lots of companies going through long application processes, writing CVs, cover letters, and you have an online assessment, then a video interview, then an assessment center, then an interview, and you have to do all these things for a whole bunch of companies. With these application processes, they are very competitive. Only top 0.5 to 3% of candidates get the job. It, it differs with companies, but it's usually around that sort of percentage mark, which means you have to put a lot of work into these application processes and apply to a lot of companies. And on top of that, for a lot of you who are applying during year 13, you've got to manage your A-levels as well. So you've got to be doing your work. Um, you've also got to revise for your final A-level exams and all that sort of thing. So that's why it's super important to have productivity because you've got so much work to do. Productivity is really about how effectively can you do that work or how efficiently can you do that, or how quickly can you do that work, okay, and getting it done. So that's why if you level up your productivity, you're going to be able to get this work done, and it's going to, it's basically going to help you get degree apprenticeships, okay. So why should you listen to me on the topic of productivity, okay, so let me just give you my sort of experience, this isn't me boasting or anything, I just, I'm just showing you my experience objectively, so you can, like, you can decide whether I'm qualified to talk about productivity or not, so last year, I basically got three A stars at A level, um, whilst at the same time obviously revising for those a levels i also got eight degree apprenticeship offers going through all those application processes and i've thrown in here as well i also did like a diploma in trumpet like i play the trumpet by the way um and i was basically having to practice that like an hour every single day to go and do that exam diplomas like above grade eight so you could call it like grade nine something like that so that, that's what i did last year and then this year i've obviously started my degree apprenticeship i'm now full-time doing a 40 hour a week job studying for my degree okay i'm also obviously doing this YouTube channel. So in like the past year, I think I've posted like 118 YouTube videos, something like that. Coached dozens of students into getting degree apprenticeships from some, some, some top companies. And then just on top of that, I also do like sports six or seven times a week. Okay, so I do a lot of things and that you can see basically that's my sort of experience over the last two years. And I've managed to get all that done and it is required productivity. Okay, so that's why I'm sort of potentially qualified to talk about productivity and why I'm, why I'm giving this video. I'm not perfect with productivity, so there's still bits where, I'm, where I slip up, where I need to improve and that sort of thing, but I think because I have that experience, it means I can sort of tell you where I've messed up in the past, where I still mess up, and then help you and you can learn from that, okay? So that's, that, that's basically my experience in terms of how I've managed to level up my productivity. So again, yeah, here's just a, like a screenshot example of it. So like a year ago, um, I was I got like four subscribers in my first month and now I've got like this channel where I've done like 118 videos and I've done that over the course of a year whilst also doing my job and all that sort of thing okay so who is this video not for okay so this video is not for anyone who just wants the cute way out okay like do you want me to say some hack which is kind of suddenly going to change it and you do this or like mention like oh there's the, like this app that you you revise and it grows trees or something i don't know I, i've heard that's a thing like there's this tree app or something i don't know it sounds stupid if you ask me right but if you want that cute way out to getting your work done that's not the video for you okay also if you're not willing to sacrifice anything this isn't the video you're gonna have to go find a, a different video okay because these tips which i'm going to go through in this video and my experience i'm going to talk about they require sacrifice they require work they're not easy okay it's not just some cute tree app that you can download okay so that's who this video is not for this video is for people who are number one serious about getting to a degree apprenticeship okay and number two if you're struggling with any of the below things like procrastination unable to focus lack of consistency poor attention span you're distracted you can't trust yourself to do what you say you do you say oh yeah i'll go and do that piece of homework i'll go and write my cv then okay i'll go and do this thing and then you never end up doing it now you can't trust yourself to do it okay maybe some of those things sound familiar for you, to you if they do this is the video for you so I'm going to help with this productivity to help you get all the work done that you need to do with this degree apprenticeship application process. So how to get the most out of this video? Well, number one, just fully focus on this video. Okay. I know this is going to be a long video. Okay. It's a full guide. No idea how long we're going to get. Maybe we're going to be over an hour. Right. So just focus on the video. Okay. Stay out of the comment section. Don't go scrolling there. Stop looking at other tabs. Stop looking at the recommended, all this sort of thing. Like you literally just agreed with me in the previous one that you have one of these issues down here procrastination you can't focus attention span you're distracted okay so let's start fixing that now okay focus don't be distracted focus on this video okay and then i want you to make sure you complete the action steps so throughout this video i'm going to be mentioning things action steps that I, i'm telling you to do and like i said if you're not ready to sacrifice every, anything if you want the cute way out then this isn't the video for you i'm going to be asking of you in this video certain things which you're not going to want to do 
but you're going to get the most out of this video if you just do those things. When I suggest you do a thing, you're not going to like it, but it's going to help you with your productivity. Okay. And then finally, implement these tactics into your work. So w when I give you these tactics, so we have scheduling, distractions, just make sure you implement them. And that means it's really going to help you with just your work ethic in general, your productivity, and, and more specifically, it's going to help you with those career punch applications. So maybe that CV you've been procrastinating and you like you haven't written it yet, get it done. Okay implement the tactics that's how you're going to get the most out of this video okay so productivity full guide three sections i'm going to cover number one distractions number two scheduling and number three mindset okay and we'll start with distractions because i think distractions is the most important thing it's the biggest killer of productivity right now is distractions okay because we all have we all have one of these right among other things we've all got a phone and you're going to get distracted okay so let's get into this distractions let's go so we work best in something called deep work okay or flow state so you might have heard of the phrase flow state let me explain flow state you've probably experienced it at some point before flow state is when you're sort of just locked into a task and it just feels easy to you it feels like a breeze it's like you do it time completely disappears you forget about time and it just goes perfectly okay that's when we work best when we're in flow state so for example this whole morning when I've been sort of making this presentation together, I've been in flow state. Throughout the rest of this video, I'm going to be in flow state doing this video and like it's going to like breeze by. Okay, it might be an hour video. For me, it's just going to go by because I'm like completely in flow. I'm locked in. Okay, yeah, another thing they call it is something called deep work. Okay, and that's referring to basically when you're doing work completely uninterrupted. Okay, and that's the key thing here. You need to have no distractions. Okay, because if you get distracted, like, oh, five minutes distraction, two minutes distraction, one minute distraction, if that sort of thing happens, you keep getting distractions, you're not going to be able to lock into this flow. Okay, if you want to unlock elite productivity, it is basically how to get into flow state. That's the most important thing you can do. And you do that through having no distractions and by doing deep work. Okay, which is where you can just uninterrupted, three hours uninterrupted focus, four hours uninterrupted focus. That's the goal. Okay, you need to have no distractions, okay? So how do you have no distractions? Let's go into some specifics. So as I said, number one distraction is your phone. Okay, number one distraction. You've got to throw it away. you just got to get rid of it, okay? Do not have it near you at all when you're working. Like You don't even want it within reach when you're working, okay? Literally just throw it away, okay? And, and I actually mean this literally, okay? So I'll give you an example. When I was doing work for like sort of A-levels and that sort of thing, Sometimes I'd have my phone with me at my desk, okay, because I needed to like Google something like a, a past paper or a YouTube video or something like that. But then if I ever got distracted, like if I started going on something like, like I started scrolling on something, I would literally get my phone and chuck it across the room. Okay, I'd literally chuck it across the room because then I couldn't scroll. I couldn't get distracted by some sort of thing because it's literally out of reach. Okay, so like I, I even like this, this is what, this is how like, specific I, I i did this thing i would literally place a, a hoodie like a jumper in the corner of my room so that i could chuck it well and when i chucked it it like didn't bang on the ground and like break or something like it so it landed on the hoodie right and it was nice and soft landing right so literally get get your phone away okay and that's like if you need to have your phone with you preferably don't even have it in the room with you okay out of reach out of sight you don't want to be looking at your phone you don't want to be thinking of your phone because just having your phone anywhere near you is going to be a distraction Okay, you don't want it near you at all. So just get rid of it. Whenever you need to work, make sure it's not in the same room as you. Okay, if, if it does have to be in the same room as you, I'll go into some tactics in a second, but preferably just, just get rid of it. Okay, whenever you're working, get rid of your phone. I'll give you an example again. So last night, when I was going to bed, my phone was on 20%. Okay, normally in that situation, I just put it on charge overnight, wake up 100% boom. But I knew I needed to wake up today, so tomorrow effectively, I needed to wake up the next day and film and like sort of script this video film this video i need to get that work done okay so what i did was i didn't charge it and that meant basically when i woke up my phone would have been on 20 percent, 15 percent. and what does that mean that means i'm not gonna be able to go on my phone and scroll okay because my phone's on 15 20 percent. if it had been on 100 percent, then i would have been able to scroll but what i had to do is when i woke up when i put my phone on charge completely different room then i came to the computer started scripting out this presentation Okay, so that's that's another one you can do. Your phone doesn't have to be on full charge all the time. If you literally like, if you have like a, you you have too much screen time, you're on your phone too much. Literally, don't charge it. That's the easiest way to solve screen time. Just don't charge your phone, then you can't do it. Okay, another one 
is start turning it off fully. Okay, so you know when you hold down the power button, right? And then it, like on iPhone, like the swipey thing comes up and you can swipe it to turn it off. Do that. I, pro I, I do this all the time. Probably not many of you have even like turned your phone off like that in ages, right? And probably even if ever, right? Turn your phone off fully like that. Because again, it's just an extra bit of friction to going on your phone. Because say you're working and then you're just like distracted. You want to like scroll or something. You pick up your phone. It's it's fully off. It means you have to like hold down the power button, wait like one minute for it to turn on. That bit of friction is enough for you to be like, now nah, this is stupid. Let me get back to work. Like I've done this before where I've wanted to go on my phone, right? I get to my phone. It's fully off. I start turning it on. I start like I turn on the power button. And during that, like, 60 seconds I have to wait, I'm like, actually, no, this is stupid. Let me get back to work, and then I put my phone away. So that just bit of friction is going to keep you in the work, and it means you're less likely to get distracted. Another one for you here is don't use it as your alarm. Okay, do not use your phone as an alarm. Okay, because here's what happens. You use your phone as the alarm. Da -da 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 like, what? It, it rings in the morning, right? So you pick it up, unlock it, turn your thing off. Oh, then guess what? You're on Instagram within, like, five seconds. And then once you're on Instagram, once for five seconds, it's like, guaranteed you're still there five minutes later and then it's like guaranteed you're still there 10 minutes later like obviously if it's a school day and you have to get up like fair enough but on a weekend let's say you use your phone as an alarm it's like you're going to pick up your phone you're going to go on your phone you're going to be doing stuff on it okay don't use your phone as an alarm let you get an alarm clock like if you if you have an alexa or something then you can just do an alexa alarm if you don't have an alarm clock you can literally buy them on amazon for like 10 or 15 pounds it is worth the investment okay because it means your phone can be miles away from you the alarm goes off, you gotta get up. You gotta get up, man. Okay, so preferably when you're working, phone is nowhere near you. Nowhere near you whatsoever. Okay? But sometimes there are gonna be situations where you are gonna need your phone. Okay, and like obviously day to day you're gonna have to have your phone with you. So how do you sort of reduce going on your phone basically when when you do have your phone with you? Here's the second you gotta do. This is your first action step, okay? This is what you need to do right now, okay? So go on to settings, these are the things you need to do, okay? The first one's tap to wake, okay? So a lot of phones, again, it, it depends on like what model your phone is, but like I'm pretty sure iPhones definitely have this one. A lot of them have a setting where if you sort of tap it, like the screen will light up, okay? And that's literally more likely to get you on your phone, okay? Because it means you tap it once, it all lights up and it's all nice, and oh, I've got a notification, and oh, I'm now I'm scrolling on my phone for 10 minutes, okay? All because you tapped it. Another one is rise to wake. This one's even worse. This is where like if you even move your phone, like the whole screen lights up and that means literally say you're just holding your phone or like you it, it's on your desk and you just like tap it or something the whole thing's gonna gonna like turn on all your notifications are there or whatever the, the screen's there it's nice and inviting oh yeah oh, i've literally moved it now i can just go straight on and it means you're on your phone you need to like increase the friction to getting on your phone you need to make it as difficult as possible to get on your phone you don't want to get on your phone you need to be working doing what you need to do Okay, so tap to wake, turn it off. Rise to wake, turn it off. It has to be so that you literally have to press the power button to turn it on. Okay, and it's like, oh, it's a tiny thing, but it's like that tiny bit more is going to stop you getting distracted because it means your phone's not going to light up in front of you and you're like, I feel like I kind of want to go on my phone. If you completely forget about your phone, you're in flow state and you're locked in, you're not even going to think about your phone. But then when it lights up, you're like, oh, yeah, I remember I have a phone which has Instagram, which has YouTube, which has a million videos on, which has Amazon Prime. I could go and watch all those right now. Why am I even doing work? Right, let's leave. Let's go do that. It's not good. Next one's Face ID and fingerprint. Again, this makes it too easy to turn on your phone. Okay, because it means you can just do your phone, look at it. Half a second later, you're on there. You're on the apps. You need to make it difficult. Okay, so you need to basically get rid of Face ID, get, get rid of fingerprint, and make sure you have like a full passcode. So like you have to type in the digits. Because again, that like three seconds of extra work you have to do is friction to stop you going on your phone. Because it's not just tap your fingerprint, do your face ID, boom, I'm on it in one second. It's like, oh, you have to put in your passcode. Like put in like a six digit passcode on, on like your iPhone or something. Okay, it's friction. The other one is notifications. And like this is notifications, you just got to get rid of them. Whatever it is. Instagram. Like the news. Um whatever it is you got to get rid of it so for example me if you send me a text message i'm not going to pick it up like because like there's notifications are off i'm not going to pick up a text message whatsapp i 
more likely to pick up, but WhatsApp, I'm, re I'm not really going to pick up. I if you want to actually get in contact with me, like, and you want me, like, in an emergency, I literally tell, like, my family, if you actually need to get in contact with me in an emergency, like, actually email me, because I'm actually going to pick up my emails faster than anything else, because I check my emails all the time to, obviously, for this sort of thing. But, like, in terms of notifications, WhatsApps, I'm not going to really pick them up. Text messages, I'm not going to really pick them up. Okay, because my notifications are just off. I don't have social medias, but if I did have social medias, notifications would be off. You don't need to know every five seconds if someone likes your comment or a new post or trending, all this sort of stuff. Just get rid of notifications. Because the moment you see that, it, it does your curiosity. Straight away, it's your curiosity there. Oh yeah, new message. Click on it. Whatever it is, Snapchat, get rid of new notifications, turn them off. It's like, what you want to do is, you go on these apps when you need to and when you want to. Okay, so when you want to check your messages, okay, fine, go on the app and check your messages. Okay, when you want to go and check some certain thing, fine, go on Instagram and go and check a certain thing. What you don't need to know is, is get interrupted by notifications. You don't need to know every five seconds when someone's messaged you. Like, you don't need live updates. You don't have to reply to them within five seconds. It's like, what you can do is, go and check these apps twice a day. Like, once at lunchtime, once in the evening. Okay, you don't need to be like, have it every five seconds. Oh, they messaged me. Yep, yeah, reply instantly, reply instantly, reply instantly, reply instantly. Because then it's just interrupted. Then you can't get into that flow state. You can't get that deep work state because you're constantly getting interrupted. Okay, notifications off. Do those action steps. Tap to wake off, rise to wake off. Face ID, fingerprint off, notifications off. Here's what we need to turn on. Silent. Yeah. And airplane mode and do not disturb. My phone is basically on all three of those all the time. It's like it's, it's on airplane mode most of the time until I actually need to like do something specific on it. I'll turn on the Wi-Fi or the data, go and like Google a thing or send whatever I need to do. And then I'm straight back on airplane mode. Okay. And it's just like D&D &D most of the time, silent all the time. Okay. It's like if, if you ever meet me in person, right. And like you check my phone and, and I'm not on silent airplane mode or do not disturb. You literally have permission to slap me. Right. Because I'm literally 99% of the time on silent airplane mode and do not disturb. Just because I don't need any notifications, I don't need anything. Like I said, if it's an emergency, email me. Don't call me. Call someone else. I'm not going to be picking up in an emergency because I'm silent airplane mode in D&D. &D. Go and do that as much as possible. Now, this one's a killer. This one's the best one. Like the, Out of all these phone settings, one, this one changes the game. So if you're getting distracted, you're on your phone, scrolling, you're checking your phone too much, do this one absolutely changes the game. What you can do is you can go onto your phone... Go to settings and it'll probably be under like accessibility or something. You can change your whole phone screen to grayscale, which basically means black and white. Okay, so none of the colors are showing up. No, it's not like this nice. You go look at the Instagram logo and it's nice little pink and orange and it looks all cute and all this. Oh, you go to the Snapchat logo and it looks all yellow and nice. WhatsApp, oh, it's green. Like YouTube's a bright red, all this stuff. Everything is gray. Okay, what that literally means is your phone is, <laughs> is literally boring. Okay, it makes your phone boring trust me I, i've had periods like when i'm when i'm going on like intense focus like i need to focus whack the phone on grayscale so there's been like times when i've gone on grayscale for a couple of weeks at a time of intense focus whack it on grayscale trust me you won't want to look at your phone guaranteed guaranteed if you don't believe me try it you will not want to look at your phone because it's like the outside world is more interesting to you it's like would i rather do like um i don't know write some essay do some homework do my personal statement write a cv do a practice interview or would i rather go on my phone it's like my phone is grayscale at least if i'm doing my cv and i'm on word there's like a blue like tab at the top on microsoft word like my phone is black and white okay so this one's like this one's this one's the killer bro this one's this one's the best one out there if you seriously need get distracted with your phone you need to need help with that just whack your phone on grayscale trust me you're not checking your phone Trust me, you're not even going on your phone. Okay, so those are all the phone settings. Depending on like how bad your phone addiction is, essentially, it will depend on like how many of those you need to do. Personally, I would say I would recommend this one, I'd recommend it to everyone. This one, I'd recommend it to everyone as well, to be honest. This one is like only for extreme, like if you're really bad, like if your screen time is, is like actually jarring, then get on this one. Can okay, your screen time will massively drop? And like your screen time is literally an indicator of like. How, how how much work you get done how what your productivity is like how successful you're going to be okay it, it's like an indicator it, when you go on the the screen time and it says like eight hours tiktok it's like okay and it's like when you know that one guy who's like his screen time is like 30 minutes a day it's like that's mental 
Okay, that's how you're getting work done. Okay, so those are the settings I'd recommend on your phone. You can do those actionable steps right now. Okay, this next one's going to be controversial. So on top of all those settings, I'd also recommend doing these. So I was, I was giving some examples in that previous section about like, oh, Instagram, Snapchat, and all this sort of thing. Forget all of that anyway, just get rid of them. Okay, this one's controversial. This is what ones you're not going to want to do. And this is where I said at the start, who's this video not for? It's not for people who aren't willing to sacrifice stuff. Okay, if you want productivity, if you want to work hard, you're going to have to sacrifice these distractions. Social media, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat. Even YouTube. Like, honestly, I, I do YouTube, but I would rather, if like if your productivity isn't very good and you can't get work done, I would rather you get rid of YouTube. Okay, because it's like, if it's distracting you, it's distracting you. Okay, it's like for me, so as, as well as like social media, for me it's like the film things. Like Amazon Prime, Disney Plus. Just having those apps on my phone, it, it, it sort of distracts from my focus. Because it's like I'll just be on my phone for something I need to do. Like maybe I need to check an email or send a thing or like check a YouTube video or something like that. I'll, I'll just see the Amazon Prime like logo in my, like on my phone. And I'll instantly just want to go watch a film. Like, it would just give me that desire. That's why, like, you can't... You, it's not It's not even about, like, oh, I just won't go on these apps. It's like, you can't even have them there. Because, well, this is for me anyway. Maybe maybe you have the willpower. But for me, it's like, I see it, I want to go do it. Okay, so it's like, I'll go on my phone for a specific thing. I'll go and, like, see the Disney Plus app. And I'll be like, I kind of want to go and watch Endgame. <laughs> three-hour movie. Yeah, I want to go watch a three-hour movie instead of getting the work done that I need to do. Okay, which is why, again, during like times of when I've been in fully deep focus, those apps are gone. Amazon Prime, Disney Plus. And another two for me was like BBC Sport, Sport and Formula One. Like I just see it and I just want to check it. Oh, what's happening in the Formula One? Got rid of those. Because they're just too distracting. Okay, too distracting. So social media, I, I would honestly say get rid of it. Because like, let's be honest, you don't even need it. Like, I'll get into if you need it or not in a second, right? But if your productivity is bad, okay, and you get distracted by things like TikTok, Instagram, Snapchat, you spend a lot of time on those, you have to delete it. It's the only way. Because you're not going to get through it with willpower. Okay? Because you have to understand these big tech companies, the way they get they, they make money is basically by having you on the platform. Because it's all like advertising revenue. So the more like eyes they have on the platform, the longer you're on the platform, the more adverts you're seeing, the more money they're getting. So they basically, in an ideal world, you would watch their platform 24-7, like 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Because it means you'd be watching the most adverts. So what they do is, they invest millions of dollars, dollars, into keeping you on the platform. Okay, and it's things as simple as like the user experience, okay, like the UX. So you notice, you go to any of these big tech tech apps, YouTube, like you can even check it now, all the little widgets and everything, they're all going to be rounded. They're all going to have these nice little curves around them. Do you know why that is? That's because they just look nicer, okay? Because if it was just like a square rectangle, if you went to like YouTube like 10 years ago, it would literally just be a square rectangle. But now it just looks more aesthetically pleasing because they have these little rounded corner things. That's going to keep you on the platform more. Okay, and it's like, it's a tiny thing, but it's psychological. It's going to keep you on the platform more. Another one. If you haven't already, I want you to subscribe. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm being serious. This is like a point. If, if you actually don't want to subscribe to me, then you can unsubscribe after. That's fine. But just to test something, if you haven't subscribed already, go and click the subscribe button. And when you do, definitely on desktop, I'm not sure if it does this on mobile, but it'll do like a weird like animation thing where like little sparkles come up and like a thing flies off. It doesn't need to do that. You could just like press the subscribe button and then you're subscribed, right? But it has this like nice little animation, so it like looks good. So it like gives you dopamine and it makes you um like feel good about the platform and stay good on the platform. That's why it has these little special features. Like I think it's the same when you when you click the like button, feel free to like the video. Um, if you get value at any point from it, when you click the like button, rather than just like liking it, it does like a weird like animation thing. Because it makes you feel good and it keeps you on the platform. So that's the thing why it, it's it's not as simple as just keep them on your phone. Yeah, I'm not going to use it. Yeah, I'm only going to check it once a day. Yeah, when I'm working, I'm just going to leave it. Because it's like, you're up against millions of dollars. Dollars. You're up against millions of dollars of investment in keeping you in the plat like on the platform. Okay, it's like I do this. So the, the one I struggle with is YouTube Shorts. So I've never had TikTok because I just know it's just game over, right? Snapchat, I got rid of it when I had to 
I'm basically locked in for my A-levels. And I, I haven't had Snapchat for like a year now. Like I had someone like a month ago, one of my friends from school, um, from like I knew him from back in the day, um, was like, oh, you, you've left me on red for like 12 months. I'm like, I haven't had Snapchat for 12 months. Like I haven't left anyone on red. I just haven't um, left on delivered, sorry. I just haven't had Snapchat for 12 months. Instagram, I've had Instagram for two months of my life. I downloaded it for like two months in like 2023 or something. Uh, I was completely addicted. I was like just checking it all the time. Reels, like I literally come home from school and just reels and just scroll through reels and I'd just be checking people's feeds. I'd be checking my own, like my, I'd literally be looking at my own profile for ages, right? I was just, Instagram was completely, so I just, I, I just got rid of that after two months because I just couldn't handle that. And then YouTube Shorts is the one I'm, like that's the one I, I struggle with at the moment. Because it's like, I need to go on YouTube to go and like check my videos, okay? Or record a video or something like that. Or like upload, it, change the description, whatever it is. Like reply to a comment or something like that. And what happens is when I do that, I end up going on shorts because there's a shorts tab. And I, I'm like, oh yeah, I'll just watch one short. Yeah, or one short. Yeah, good one. Go on one short and then it's like, oh, that was a good short. They're like th that, I enjoyed that. That was dopamine, okay? Scroll another one. Oh yeah, that was good. Scroll, scroll, scroll. And then it's like, sometimes, man, the YouTube Shorts algorithm just like it locks in. The, like the algorithm, the YouTube Shorts algorithm, I think is the best one. Like it, just, it sometimes it just gets <laughs> like my videos like perfectly. Got to get rid of it. So there's been times where I've got rid of the YouTube app, and I literally make YouTube videos. So I just sort of had to get around it. And I was basically using YouTube, but I was using the Google Chrome version. So rather than having like the YouTube app on my phone, I would go into Google Chrome and literally go to YouTube.com and do everything there. And that's really helpful because because it's not the app, not everything looks as nice. So remember what I just hear about like big tech? They've invested in making their app look beautiful with little animations and rounded things. And like live really good experience like if they can literally increase like think think about shorts okay shorts you're scrolling through okay scrolling 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 they have made it so there's as little time as possible between each short okay so it's like literally 0.1 seconds you're on the next one 0.1 seconds on the next one 0.1 seconds on the next one they've spent millions of dollars improving that from a 0.5 second loading time because if there's a 0.5 second loading time you're not as addicted and they're going to get rid of it, okay? And that's the thing with Google Chrome. Google Chrome isn't as optimized, so it doesn't look as nice. It doesn't feel as nice. It takes longer to load and all this sort of thing, which makes the YouTube experience less addictive. So that, that's another thing you can try. Instead of having the app, go on like the Google Chrome version, which won't be as optimized. It's literally not as optimized for addicting you because these apps, trust me, are millions of dollars optimized in addicting you and getting you on them and staying on them. Okay, so honestly, get rid of them. Get rid of the apps action step right now if you're like coping right now and you're saying no no i need instagram i need tiktok i need snapchat like i know i'm procrastinating a whole bunch of stuff i stud i struggle i sh sorry i struggle with focus i struggle with getting work done i'm distracted but i need instagram tiktok and snapchat that's fine i just want you to comment down below why you should keep your social medias okay why is it, why in your situation where you're procrastinating you're not getting work done you can't focus you have a short attention span basically have brain rot at this point yeah but you want to keep social media, just comment down below why you should keep your social media, okay? Guaranteed, no one's going to comment that, okay? Guaranteed, you're not going to comment that, okay? Because it's going to look stupid. You're going to, you're going to go into the comments and just say something like, oh, I want to talk to my friends, okay? Well, you don't need Instagram to talk to your friends, just text message them. Because text message is the same as Instagram, it's just without the reels. It's without all the little pictures that you're going to scroll on and spend loads of time on. It's like, okay, why do you want your social media? Comment down below. Oh, I want to see pictures of my friends. Bro, just WhatsApp your friends. They can send you a picture there. You, you, don't, have to do, you don't have to have Instagram where there's reels and all these distractions. Okay, so honestly, if you're procrastinating, but you still want to keep social media, you think this is too difficult of a step for you, you don't like the sound of this step, just comment down below why you should keep it. Guaranteed you won't do it because you'll do that and then you'll just feel like this is actually stupid. Like, you'll start typing it and be like, oh, yeah, I need to talk to my friend. Bro, text him. You don't need TikTok to text your friend. Guaranteed you don't need TikTok to text your friend. Okay? Treat yourself like someone you're responsible for helping. This is another one. Okay, so I'm just, these are sort of, what I've done is I've told you to get rid of these apps. And I can just, I know there's going to be like limiting beliefs in your mind right now, which are like, no, 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 that's not possible. That's what I'm doing now. I'm getting rid of these. Okay, these limiting beliefs. Again, a limiting belief is going to be that, oh, no, you need the app. Yeah, no, no, I need Instagram, even though I'm procrastinating. Okay. Well, there's this book. Okay, I'll show, I'll show you. There's a book by this guy called Jordan Peterson. It's called 12 Rules for Life. Okay, that's the wrong way around. Great. Um, <laughs> 12 Rules for Life. 
one of the rules is treat yourself like someone you are responsible for helping. So it's a really good book, by the way, and especially that chapter. I really enjoyed that chapter. Basically, the sense of it is, let me just give you a quick summary of basically what it's about. Treat yourself like someone you're responsible for helping. Basically, how best to describe this? We all have a lot of self-hatred inside ourselves. Okay, because we're all, at the end of the day, we're all sinners. Like, we all do bad, we all do bad things. We all mess up, right? We do things that we regret, all this sort of thing. Which means we end up building this sort of self-hatred of ourselves. And what it means is we end up basically taking revenge on ourselves and like sabotaging ourselves. So that's why people like they sort of choose, they, they do things which they know, they know for a fact are bad, but they just do it anyway because they feel like they don't deserve to do the right thing because they're a bad person. Okay, I don't want to get too philosophical or anything or religious or anything like that right now in this video, but that's essentially the sense of it. We all like hate ourselves. <laughs> so we sabotage ourselves and we do bad habits on ourselves. But here's the thing, here's the interesting thing. We don't do that to other people. Okay? Other people, we want the best for them and we try and get the best for them. So for example, basically a, a way to think of this is like Imagine you had a son or a daughter, okay? Would you want them to be on social media? Okay? Would you say, oh yeah, at, at 17 when you, you're you like, you, you haven't got your work done, you need to do this work, otherwise, if you don't get into this degree of friendship, you're going to go to university and it's £45,000 of debt and then your life's a whole different path. You just, just You need to do this work, okay, do this work, get your exams, get your grades. What would you say to them? Would you say to them, oh yeah, no, 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 you need social media? Or would you say, no, just get rid of social media and do your work? Like, when, when you say it like this, it's obvious. Just think about it. Would you want your daughter to have like Snapchat and Instagram and TikTok and all this sort of thing, your son having these apps when he has work to do. No. So just treat yourself like that. Because if you like treat yourself like yourself, then it's like you don't care if you sabotage yourself by using Instagram and TikTok and, so and Snapchat because you sort of have that self-hatred. Okay, so don't worry if you, you don't fully grasp the concept of that because it is like a bit philosophical, psychological as well. But just like, here's the key message. Basically treat yourself like someone you're responsible for helping. Like just imagine you're looking at yourself as if like you're looking at your son. And then give the advice that you'd give to your son and just give it to yourself. So for example, your son, you're going to tell him, get rid of social media. Yeah. Like make sure you're eating healthy. Okay, go to the gym. Right, don't stay up late, like scrolling on some stupid thing until 3am. Like get to bed early, get your sleep. All this sort of thing. All the like positive good things you would tell someone you are responsible for helping, just treat yourself like that. Okay? And if you if you tell your son or daughter that like when they're doing their exams and they need to do a CV, if, if you tell them, oh yeah, go scroll on social media the whole time, don't do any work, then fair enough. It's like, okay, fine. But if you would actually like tell your son or daughter, get rid of social media, focus on your work. That's what's more important. Then just treat yourself like that. And get rid of your own social media. Okay. If you do end up needing to use your social medias. Here's a tip for you. Go on your computer. Because again it comes down to this big tech investment thing. They've invested as I said millions into the app. Because everyone does this thing on their app. If you go on your computer. It's all a bit less refined. And you're just less likely. To sort of. Get distracted and start like scrolling. Or doing some stupid thing on your computer. So it's like, for example, if you need to go on YouTube and like um, watch a video, like say you're you're writing your CV and you need to Google like how to write a CV or maybe you're like um, you're revising like a certain like physics topic and you need to Google, oh, like how do you do like um, electronic circuits or something like that. If you need to Google that on YouTube, don't do it on your phone because the problem is if you go on your phone, you go on YouTube, oh, I click shorts, now I'm scrolling on my phone, okay? If you go on your computer, you're much more likely to just stay on the task at hand. Okay, you're much less likely, like, I don't think anyone scrolls on shorts on their computer. Like, I could be wrong with that, but, like, scrolling, that's like a phone thing. I don't see people going on their computer and start scrolling on shorts. Like, definitely 100%, you can still get distracted when you're on your computer, which is what I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mention some, some tips for that in a second. But it's, like, just in general, I think a safer bet is doing as much stuff as possible on your computer rather than on your phone. 
it's like if i don't know you like you have an instagram account where you like post things i don't know like you you help people with i don't know i, I don't know what people do on instagram right but say say you posted some like you just post like daily things to your followers on instagram go and post go onto your computer and then do the post there because then you're much less likely to get distracted than if you go on your phone you post it there then you got reels then you're on your phone so you get a message you check that and all that sort of thing like computers it's just computer is less of a dangerous environment compared to your computer now in terms of your computer settings it's to sort of replicate as much as possible from the phone setting so obviously your computer doesn't have the same thing like um rise to wake and face id i don't think that's all like phone sort of stuff but you, it's, it's like the same sort of thing with your computer you want to get rid of as much stuff as possible so with your computer you can get like little google chrome extensions that sort of hide stuff so for example you can get distraction free youtube you can probably just google these and find out the actual link or I, I might put the link in the description if i remember this is what my youtube home screen looks like so it means if i come on my computer and i need to like check one of my videos i need to search a certain thing cool i'll go and search it but it means i'm not getting distracted it means i'm not loading up like the youtube website and then oh i'm just oh i saw this video in my recommended and i'm, I'm gonna watch it and then like do you know what i mean i'm not getting distracted because this is all it looks like and it's the same with like I have it like hide the view count, hide the comments, hide like the recommended videos when I'm watching them and all this sort of thing just so I don't get distracted and I can just focus on the task I need to do, uploading the YouTube video, checking the YouTube video, whatever it is. Another thing when I'm working with, with computer is I hide the taskbar. So you know the little bar at the bottom on Windows where it's like got your, like it's got your list of apps, so it's got like Google Chrome, File Explorer all your open windows and then it's the one we're in like the top the, the bottom right they have like it has like the time next to it and in the bottom left it's got like the start button i hide that when i'm working so obviously I've, I've hidden it now anyway so that i can just do this recording but i'll leave it hidden for basically the rest of the day while i'm doing work the reason for that simple reason is because it means i can't see the time now do you remember at the start of the video when i was talking about flow state okay flow state is the optimal the optimal way we want to work well flow state is where you sort of lose a sense of time Okay, you're so locked into the task that you completely lose a sense of time. For example, I have no idea what the time is right now. I know the time I started recording, but I have no idea how long it's been. It could have been 10 minutes. Like, I, I have no idea where at the video. It could be 10 minutes, it could be 40 minutes. I don't know, because I'm just locked in, right? Because I can't see the time when I'm working, because I just leave the taskbar hidden, it means I don't get that recognition of, oh, it's been half an hour. Oh, it's been an hour. Because that's, that's how you're going to end up getting out of the task and being like, oh, I've been working this for two hours. I kind of want to go have a break now. Okay, because this is the thing like schools recommend, like work for 40 minutes and have a 20 minute break. Like that's all they said at school. They always said that thing, regular breaks. breaks. And I'm like, when I would be revising for exams, I'd be doing it in like five hour blocks, like five hours in the morning, lunch, boom, five hours in the afternoon, boom, come out my room, have tea, boom, three hours, go to bed. Okay, and it's like my breaks, okay, I'd have a break at lunch. Okay, I'd have a break at tea. Maybe I'd have a half an hour before I go to bed. But I won't be doing this 40 minute, 40 minute work, 20 minute, yeah, let's have a break, have a walk, have a Kit Kat, like, no. Okay, so the taskbar, that, that's like, that's a hack you can do. Go and do that now on your, like, laptop or computer or whatever when you're working. Get rid of the taskbar, you can, the screw, like, the time's going to disappear. Make sure you don't have any clocks or watches, like, this is where your phone, like, don't look at your phone, don't check the, the phone time or anything like that. Because it means you're then going to just be completely locked into what is going on my keyboard's like pinging around um you're going to be completely locked in okay because you're going to forget about the time you're going to forget because when, when you see the time and you've been like oh three hours has passed that's when your mind psychologically starts going oh i've worked hard for three hours let's leave now but here's the thing if you do the same amount of work you don't know it's three hours you're not going to be conscious that you've spent three hours on it so you're just going to continue another three hours on it. it's like you're literally going to work until the work is done if you don't see the time if you're like locked in in that flow state so it's like honestly there's like times where if if i'm literally home alone in my house i will like forget to eat lunch and like forget forget to get my food and that sort of thing because i've just been locked in it's like i'll have lunch and then i'll just work for like eight hours or something and it's like i literally forgot to even have tea because i was just so locked in i didn't even realize the time it was like it got dark but i didn't know it was that you know what i mean okay get rid of that taskbar get rid of the time another one is things like widgets so on like Windows, you press like the Windows button and then like the start menu comes up where it's got your whole list of apps. There were two widgets there that were distracting me. And this is the exact same with your phone. Like when, like how, how it happened for me, I'd go on my phone and then I'd see Prime Video and then I'd want to go watch a film. 
Okay, it was the same thing on on the computer. Basically, there were two little widgets. One of them was like a news widget, so it kept basically whenever I got went on the Windows tab to like open a new app, I just see this like news widget, and then the news would just be saying something like some like random news story, and I didn't want to know that would distract me, because another thing is I don't watch the news. I don't know anything about what goes on in the world. Okay, I've been through like different when when I'm sort of going through like my deep focus phases. I don't even watch the news at all, and then like in between, I watch I watch the news a bit. But like right now, probably for the past, I want to say like month or so, and I plan to go forward like this for the next couple of months because I'm going into like a deep focus sort of block for the next couple of months. I don't look at the news at all. Like I I don't know anything about the news. I literally tell my family don't don't tell me a single thing in the news. They don't tell me a single news story. I don't want to know anything. Okay, because it's how you get distracted okay and there was this widget on my computer that would just say a news story like oh some random celebrity did this thing like i don't care let me show you a diagram okay if my my mouse is not working hold on there we go okay let me show you a diagram okay you have a certain amount of energy okay right how's the best to draw this okay you have a certain amount of energy Okay, and this is what most people do. Okay, they have that energy on there. I'm not gonna. This is shocking. Okay, I actually need like a graphics board or something. Okay, hold on. Right, last time, third and final time, we got this. Okay, this is your energy, like sort of radiating outwards. Okay, and that's work. Okay, this one here is work. Like that's the work you need to do. Okay, this one here. That's like um. The energy you spend on like, exercise, maybe. Okay, maybe go to the gym, do a sport, that sort of thing. Okay. Then, another thing is, like, you play a musical instrument. Okay, nice. And then another thing you do is, you watch the news. And then there's a bit of energy, a bit of your time, like, you spend and thinking about the news, that sort of thing. And then another one is, you like watching films. Cool. So you're interested in that as well. And then, like, another one is, you, um... You do that. You like volunteer at this random place, and then you have this random job here, and then you like talk to your friends here, and then you do this random thing here, and that's all your energy. Okay, and that's a hundred percent your energy. It's all getting spread out. This is the better way to do it. It's just to focus all your energy into one thing. Because you see how here it's like eight eight different things you're focusing on. It's all getting completely spread out. When you focus on one thing, this is called essentialism, by the way. When you focus on one thing, you get so much more energy for it. So the reason why you're probably struggling with your work and you can't focus on it or, or procrastinating is because you're getting distracted by so many other things. So like th this is your work one here. The reason why that's so low is because all your energy is going out in different directions. Like it's coming here, 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 it's coming here. It's, coming here. it's like if you just got rid of those ones there, you'd have so much more energy for this. Okay, this is essentialism. Okay, and this is what I mean by like, I don't even watch the news. Okay, I don't even watch sport, anything like that. I don't watch TV. Because I've tried to avoid as many of these distractions as possible. And this is where it comes back to again, social media. It's like, with one of these, one of these is social media. Say you get rid of social media, that's now an extra bit there of energy and time, which gets added onto your work. Okay, so I'm not necessarily saying you need to have one focus at all, but it's like, have like two or three like important ones to you and then get rid of everything else that's irrelevant. Just get rid of it. Because you're never going to get good at that one thing. You're never going to be able to like fully lock into that work if you're thinking about a billion other things, if you're doing a billion other things. Okay. That was a bit of a tangent, but that's essentialism for you. Focus on things. That's why I don't watch the news because me like hearing about the news and knowing about things is just another one of these strands that takes away from my work. I don't want to know about it. I don't want to think about it. Like, I only find out about things when someone tells me them. And I'm like, just don't tell me. I, d I don't want to know about it. Okay, and then another widget was like, I'd have like a Spotify widget. Okay, I don't even have Spotify. I don't even know how the, how there is a thing of it, right? But it's like on the, on the Windows thing, there'd be a widget of Spotify and then like random people would come up like Sabrina Carpenter and like Oasis or something like that. And then that would distract me because then I'm starting thinking about like music and this sort of thing. So I just got rid of it. Okay, so you want to get rid of all these distractions, whatever it is. So going back to the Amazon Prime example, I'll give you another example on my phone. I had Amazon Prime. I hadn't turned off notifications. And basically, 
I still haven't, to be fair. This is actually something I should do. I'm going to do that after this video. I'm going to, to be honest, I'm going to get rid of the whole laugh, actually, now, now you mention it. I, I was working one day, and halfway through the day, a notification pops up on my phone, and it says, new film now available on Amazon Prime. And it's like The Hunger Games. And this was a book, right? They basically got a new book of the Hunger Games. It's called like the Songbird and Snake. Yeah. Knocked everything over. New book, and I'd read it about. I don't know. This might have been like I want to say like March or something. I, I I read the book. Really good book. Really enjoyed it. And then I knew there was a film which they'd released like six months ago, and I was just thinking, oh, it'd be cool to watch that film. But whatever. Didn't get around to it, so it never happened. And then I'm working one day, and then halfway through the day on my phone, a notification pops up from Amazon Prime. Hunger Games, Songbird and Stakes film now available on Amazon Prime. Guess what I did that evening? Did I like do my work? No, I, I went and watched the new film because they just told me about it and I was interested. Okay, now was it the end of the world? No, because at the end of the day, I, I did on that day, I did all the work I need to do and then I went and watched the Hunger Games film. Okay, so no one really got hurt in the process, right? But it's like that same situation could happen where you do have work to do. Like, say you had a CV you had to do, but then all of a sudden, like, a Amazon Prime notification comes up saying you got this film. Okay, it'll be different for you. We'll all have, like, different things we're basically addicted to. For me, it's like, oh, Amazon Prime saying there's a new film. Disney Plus saying there's a new film. It happened another time. Like, Amazon Prime popped up saying um, Inglorious Bastards. It's basically a film about, like, killing Nazis, right? I'd, I'd wanted to watch it for a while. It popped up saying that was going to, like, go off Amazon Prime in a couple of days. So guess what? I went and watched it. Again, it didn't hurt anyone because I'd done all my work. But just imagine this happening in a situation where you still have work to do, but then you get distracted. You can't lock in because you're now, oh, like now, no, I'd, I'd rather go watch that film. Like you have to get rid of all those distractions that want to take you away from what you're doing because your mind constantly just wants to do the easy thing. Like your mind wants to go and watch a film. Your mind wants to go and do this. Your mind wants to go and scroll on this, watch this YouTube video, go check this Instagram. So you just, you can't let those distractions be there because the moment the distraction's there, you're going to want to do it. But if there's no discretion there, you can stay in flow state. And when you're in flow state, you're not going to think about anything else. You're going to be locked in the work. So it's like all of these getting rid of distractions and this sort of thing is all about maintaining flow state. Essentialism. Another one, any apps you have, just like the ones you have to keep. So I'm, as I've said, get rid of Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, all that stupid stuff. Any like you do actually have to keep, just get them off your home screen. So my home screen is completely blank oh i actually have one app so i've just released my coaching program it's on like an app called school that's the only app i have on my thing but apart from that for basically the past year my home screen has been completely blank blank no apps because again it, it's just that added bit of friction because now if i want to go in an app i'm not going to see it i have to purposely go for it go through it and i think that's on android because like we you can get rid of everything on the home screen and then go separately to get the apps. Maybe on Apple, I think you might have to keep them on the home screen. So maybe this is an Android thing only. Shout out to Apple users out there. If you can get them off the home screen. Because it means there's not going to be that temptation. It's all about temptation. That's what it is. So you get you see the app, then there's the temptation. You see the notification, then there's the temptation. Just get rid of the app, then there's no temptation. And that means you can focus on the work. Right. This is another one for distraction. This is basically on your specific thing. So this is what I heard from Alex Hormozy. He's like a businessman. He's like a $100 million net worth. And he's an investor in the platform school, which is, as I said, the platform I do my coaching program on to help people get degree apprenticeships. And this is this is what he does. So he, I saw his um, like his office where he works because he's like written these books. And this is where he'd write these books for like six hours a day in the morning, every morning for like literally three years or something like that. And it's his office is completely blank. So it's like the wall was just nothing there no windows and basically what it meant was the only thing he could look at was the screen and doing the work because it's that same with the phone so you remember the phone when i said it was grayscale your phone's super boring so you're gonna have to look elsewhere and not go on your phone okay it's the exact reverse with this if you make your workspace super boring you're gonna have to look at your screen and do the work because it's the only interesting thing there okay so you don't want to like be working at your computer and then like just above like your thing there's like a picture of your favorite film or something Right, because then you're going to want to go and watch a film, aren't you? Or like, there's a picture of your favorite, favorite music artist. Because then instead of going and working, every time you're here, you're just going to go and look at the music artist and be like, oh, I'm tempted to go and listen to some music and just relax now. And another one Alex Hormozzi mentioned in particular again was Windows. Like he doesn't have any windows because it's just like Windows. Then there's the temptation to look out the window and just stare out the window rather than doing work. 
like I didn't find this find out this problem, which is why I'm fine with like a window being here. But if I wanted to, but if literally the window was distracting me, like if I found myself frequently looking out the window, then I'd make sure the blinds are down, shut the blinds, don't want the distraction, just focus on this. That's another thing you can do there. Okay. Now this is a controversial one, I think. Music. Personally, for me, it's a no. I don't think you should be listening to music when you're working. Um, especially like lyrical music, like like pop songs or rap songs or like whatever that sort of thing. I don't think you should be listening to it because I don't, I don't think you're going to be fully focused. You could be like you can get more locked in without music. I think that's just my personal opinion. And if I do listen to music, it's only ever like classical or film soundtracks. I, it can never be lyrical ones because the things with lyrical is like I just start singing and then I'm just not focused. You know what I mean? So. I'll pop a couple of recommendations on the screen. So these are the kind of things I listen to when I need to get stuff done. Okay, movie soundtracks go like get get an action movie soundtrack guaranteed you're getting work done. So for example, Tenet, really good film by the way. It's overhated. Like people hate this film for no reason. If you have like a deadline you need to meet, which is in like an hour or maybe it's the next day, put on the Tenet soundtrack. So you can like Google it on YouTube and there'll be like a one hour or two hour video of the whole soundtrack. It's some by some guy called like water tower music or something like that go and put that on trust me when you hear it you will be like you'll be locked in yeah unless you're not like me maybe maybe you'll just be like this is weird right but for me that properly locks me in so yeah M maybe because it just ups the tension to be honest like when there's like some soundtrack of like james bond like saving the world or something it's like that's how it works for me but personally i just music i, I don't think you can focus and lock in fully when you listen to like your favorite songs and that sort of thing and this is just a general thing, okay? Music's going to create wider problems with your attention span. Okay? So, let me explain dopamine, okay? Because I just want to check we're all on the same page here, okay? So, I'm not a scientist or anything, so this isn't going to be like a scientific explanation. Like, I'm sure if like a PhD student like watched this presentation, they'd be like, oh, technically it's not this. Okay, like, fine, whatever. I'm just going to give a brief overview. Basically, dopamine is like a chemical that you're like body sends itself when it's it's like a pleasure chemical that sort of thing like a happiness good like whatever ple pleasure chemical right so when something like you like happens your dopamine goes up like it spikes okay and then it'll come back down okay something like that what happens is if you do things like music scrolling on tiktok they're constant dopamine hits so that's what tiktok is basically every single short is a dopamine hit Okay. So when you do these sorts of things, music, shorts, TikTok, your basically dopamine is it keeps going up like that. And what it means is you sort of get used to a baseline of this. So you're at your actual baseline's down here. So this is your baseline down here when you're doing nothing, right? You watch TikTok, it goes up to here, and because you're just constantly doing shorts, you're like da da da. It's like continual dopamine, right? your body feels like the baseline is here. Okay, because you're literally so used to all these dopamine spikes from your TikTok. What that means is after you've finished your TikTok, after you've finished doing whatever it is, your TikTok, like you just go back to like sitting in a room or something, your dopamine's down here, which should be normal. You should feel absolutely fine because that's just how normal it is for you. Because you're used to it up here, it feels like depressing and boring. Okay, that's what this dopamine stuff is about. Basically, 99% of people, and this is like especially me, like I definitely have this problem and I've had it way worse in the past, is like your dopamine is, is used to being up here. Which means now, normal life feels boring. Normal life feels awful. That's why your attention span isn't very good because you're used to like focusing on something for three seconds in an Instagram TikTok short but then when like life goes back to normal and you have to like, I don't know, focus on a one hour video or something or listen to a one minute, one hour lesson or spend two hours doing some work, you can't do it because you're so used to this like three seconds of dopamine. Okay, this is what it should look like instead. It's like you get one bit of dopamine occasionally and then you're back down to baseline. Because your baseline is good, like because like you're, it's only a short thing, your baseline is still here. What that means is, for like 99% of the time, you feel absolutely fine, and then you get a nice little dopamine. Like, it's like you, you feel good, and then you're fine. But what it is when you use TikTok, which is this one up here, it means, to be honest, you sort of get used to TikTok. Like, I don't know if you've, I've found this when I'm like scrolling. It's like you get to a point where you're not even enjoying the shorts anymore. 
and that's like you literally you just get like you're not even enjoying the shorts you're bored of the shorts that shows you that your baseline is up here because like these dopamine sparks aren't even doing anything for you like you're, you're just used to this and what that means is when that's done when that's tiktok when like you have to put your phone away when you have to go and work you can't do it you can't focus because now it's like you're you're at this level you're at like your baseline's here but it feels so bad because it's all the way down there Okay, and this is it with music, okay? When you're listening to music, it's basically gonna... That was not the button I wanted to press. When you're listening to music, it's basically gonna make your dopamine go up and stay up, which means you're gonna be used to that bass line. When you turn the music off, you're now not gonna be able to focus, or you're gonna be bored, or it's gonna be depressing, or it's gonna be boring. Okay, so everyone these days listens to music. Like, you go into the gym, everyone's, everyone's got music. You go walking anywhere, like when I'm walking around a university, everyone's got those headphones on, listen to music. You're in, I don't know, if you're in your school, in like a private study or something like that, everyone has the AirPods and listen to music all the time, all the time. And that's going to cause problems because it just means your dopamine is going to be so high and that's why you can't work. Honestly, like music is going to create wider problems with your attention span. Like the two biggest problems with attention span is number one, short form content. So TikTok, Instagram and YouTube shorts. And number two, music. So I rarely listen to music for this reason. When I'm driving in a car, I, I, I don't listen to anything. I, I drive in silence. <laughs> that sounds like I'm a psycho, but it's like, I know it's had positive effects for my focus, my attention span. And it's given me the productivity I have where I can get to where I am. Because I'm not like used to this constant dopamine. Like I can happily, I'll be honest with you, I could happily like sit in a room for an hour and just chill. And I'd just be happy in my own thoughts. Which is like for a lot of people, that would just be boring. You'd just be like, what is going on? Like, you'd just be, like, pacing around the room, like, doing something, right? But it's, like, when you don't do music, when you don't do short-form content, and you're just used to just nothing, your dopamine's reset and it's normal, that's when you're going to improve your attention span. That's when you're going to improve your focus, and you're not going to get the procrastination. So, honestly, I'd recommend a dopamine detox. If this is like you, if you're... What's the phrase I'm looking for? If you're aligning... With some of the things I'm saying here, like you can't focus, you get distracted easily, you can't work for like more than like 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 5 minutes before you have to pick up your phone and go scroll. Like for example, if I said to you, oh I can work for like 5 hours straight, and if you're like, whoa that's crazy, you need a dopamine detox. Okay, because it, it's nothing too crazy, it's like you can do it, you just need to reset your dopamine detox. So what I'd recommend doing is googling dopamine detox because like this is beyond the scope of the video i'm not gonna go into detail about how you do a dopamine detox but look for a guy called Am iman gadji he's done videos on dopamine detox basically explains what you need to do to reset your dopamine levels and then that's literally going to increase your attention span increase your focus by doing a dopamine detox okay so that's distractions okay get rid of all those distractions sort out your dopamine then you're gonna be able to focus Okay, you're gonna now have the focus. So that's like sort of the fo the focus side of things, the attention span side of things. Okay, I feel like this is gonna be a long video because I have no idea how long it's been going. Okay, but I I hope it's given you value. Let's move on to the next one, which is scheduling. Okay, so how to schedule everything you're gonna do for productivity. Okay, so there's three things that you need to do. Okay, number one is wake up early. Okay, so I can tell you about the most productive days that i've ever had right and it was all waking up at 3 30 a.m okay 3 30 a.m i remember it was in april woke up at 3 30 a.m one of my students had sent through a bunch of his like practice video interview answers i went through and i basically analyzed all his answers and sent him a video back basically analyzing all his answers telling him where he can improve and then i went and did my eight hours full of work okay Another day where I've woken up early, 3.30, I spent about two and a half hours filming a video, scripting and filming a video. I then went to university. I spent two hours on my essay before university started. And then I had my full university day. So I basically done four and a half hours of work before university even started. The reason waking up early is good is because you're going to have your full energy. Okay. If you have an important task to do, like, I don't know, writing your CV, okay, or getting something done that's difficult you have to do it in the early in the morning okay because if you spend your full day you go to school or whatever like you go to school then you come home right let's write my cv oh but it's 6 p.m i can't i'm kind of tired 
oh it's 8 p.m like it's 8 p.m like i kind of just want to get in bed and watch a film and go on social media or something like that it's not going to happen from experience i can tell you at 3 30 a.m if you're doing work you are not scrolling on social media like i can just like I can tell you from experience, I've never woken up at 3.30 a.m. to do work, went to my desk, and started scrolling. It's never happened. The thing is, if you do your full day's work, you start your work at like 8 p.m., there's a chance of you scrolling. There's a high chance of you scrolling. I, I know I've done it. When I've left work at the end of the day, and it's like scrolling. It's like, p- people say like, oh, it doesn't matter when you do it. It's like early bird. Uh, what, what's, it, what's it like? Night owl and early bird. It's like the same hours in the day. It doesn't matter if you work four hours in the morning or four hours in the evening. Either way, it's four hours. No, they're not. Morning hours and evening hours are not the same. Morning hours is basically free from distraction. You're not going to be on social media. You're not going to be like anyone distracting you, talking to you or anything like that because everyone's still asleep. Four hours in the evening, there's that temptation to just get into bed and watch Netflix. Okay, so you want to start things early. Now, eat the frog. If you had to... Okay, you went to a restaurant and they gave you two plates. On one plate, it was like your favorite meal. So whatever that is, I don't know, like spaghetti carbonara or something or like a eight ounce like ribeye medium rare steak, right? That's on one plate. The other plate is a frog. <laughs> dead or alive, I, I, I don't know, but let's just say dead to keep it family friendly. And basically they say you have to eat both of them. Which would you eat first? Right? You'd probably... Eat the frog first. Because you can eat the frog. Yeah, it's disgusting. You're eating like a frog, like weird sort of thing. But then, oh yeah, you can have your steak and it's going to be like, like yeah, okay, we, we made it for it. It's good. You're going to leave the restaurant. I've just had a steak. Forgotten about the frog. Or are you going to enjoy your steak, eat your whole steak, and then you get to the end and be like, oh yeah, I need to eat a frog. And then you're going to eat a frog and then you're just leaving the restaurant and you've eaten a frog. And now you, that's all you can taste in the mouth of frog. Like I know people actually eat frogs in like France and stuff, but like, Eating a frog is kind of weird, right? You'd eat the frog first, do the hard thing first, and then you'd go and eat the steak. It's like I do this with my meals. Like if I ever get a steak, like and this is specifically with steak, whenever I eat steak, I'll always eat the first things first, like the vegetables and potatoes, all that sort of thing. I'll leave the frog to the end because it's the best bit. But you've got to start with the worst stuff. So when you're scheduling, you're going to have a whole bunch of tasks to do. You need to schedule the right type of tasks, okay? Because there's different types of tasks. There's hard tasks. A hard task is, for me, scripting a whole video like this. Filming a whole video like this. That's hard work. Okay? An easy task for me is changing my profile picture on YouTube. Okay? Or editing a thumbnail. Or, like, replying to an email. Okay? Remember when I said deep work at the very start of this video? A deep work task is the same as, like, an eat the frog task. These are the difficult tasks that you need to get done. These are ones you need to do first. That's what this eat the frog is about. The difficult, hard task, do it first. Wake up early and do it first. So today, I woke up at 5 a.m. I have a whole bunch of things that I need to do. When I woke up at 5 a.m., okay, did I, number one, go and change my profile picture? No, I didn't, okay? What I did was, I went and scripted this video and filmed this video as first things I did in the morning. Okay, this is the hardest thing. And once you got the hardest thing out of the way, the rest of the day is easy. So you wake up, you've, you're like ready to go, okay, you have your 100% energy from like, for the rest of the day, then you do the hard task, okay, potentially if you're waking up early, no distractions as well, which is good, don't check your phone, like for example, I haven't even checked my phone this morning, I don't know if anyone's messaged me or anything like that, the only times I've used my phone this morning was to get a couple of screenshots for this presentation, and also to do like a stupid like two-factor authentication thing, because for, for like email, right, that's all I've done on my phone. I'm going to film this video, and that's the hardest part of the day done. It means the rest of the day is easy. So it's not only means the, the first part of your day is good because you'll get it done because you have all of the energy, but also the second part of your day is going to feel easy because you've done the hard stuff. Like me now going and replying to emails, it might have been kind of annoying, but it's like I just remember, I have actually just scripted like a thing for like, it took me like three hours to script, and then I filmed this video, which was like an hour plus. Okay, so you want to go eat the frog, the hardest task first. Okay, so before you go to school, like, I'm not necessarily waking up at... Th- I'm not necessarily telling you to wake up at 3.30 a.m. Okay, that's not what I'm doing. I'm just saying, as a fact, your productivity is going to be better if you wake up early. Now, it's up to you to sort of work out what is possible for you. It's probably not possible for you to wake, wake up at 3.30 a.m. and do a whole bunch of work and then go to school or something like that. But I'm just saying, even if it's something like on the weekends, rather than waking up at 10 a.m. and doing your thing, wake up at 7 a.m. 
that's what i mean okay so i'm just telling you the productivity principles and what i use but then it's up to you like how you want to specifically utilize that in your life now the final thing is pilot versus plane mode okay if you wake up okay maybe it's even early and you then go to your laptop and you decide what am i going to do today your mind is going to say some stupid stuff. Your mind is going to be like, you're going to come to your laptop and be like, what do I need to do today? Oh, I need to change the color on my CV. Oh, I need to like um, reply to this email, right? I need to change my profile picture. That's what your mind's going to tell you to do, right? And that's called pilot mode, okay? So pilot mode is when you're deciding what you need to do. Okay, so that's why it's called pilot mode. It's like pilots navigating, they're doing the... Pl- they're doing the um, I was going to say driving the plane. They're, they're flying the plane, aren't they? So they're like, they're doing all the things. Pilot, you're actively choosing what you're going to do. Okay, that's pilot mode. Okay, the problem with pilot mode is when you're in pilot mode in the morning, when you don't want to work, you end up just choosing something stupid. Okay, so it's like, what work do you want to do? It's like, you're here at 7 a.m. Oh, do I like write that essay, which is 2,000 words? Or do I like do this copy and paste thing some like random task which i like oh no let let me just reorganize one of my files right you're going to choose that because in the morning when you're choosing it your mind doesn't want to do the hard work you want to make it easy for yourself it's like we're designed by evolution to conserve energy because like we're obviously from like caveman like food was very inconsistent so we have to conserve energy that's why your mind all it wants you to do is just lie in bed eat food and be lazy because that's just our caveman instincts so that's why pilot mode doesn't work in the morning you need to do plain mode in the in the morning plain mode is where you wake up you have a checklist a to-do list and you just follow it like literally brain dead you just follow that checklist okay that's what i did this morning let me show you i had a to-do list for this morning i woke up i did my to-do list plain mode i just followed it completely brain dead it doesn't matter what my mind says, okay? It's not like, it's not if my mind goes, oh, I don't want to script the video. No, I'm going to do it because it's plain mode. So coming back to pilot mode, pilot mode, when you're deciding what you need to do, that's what you need to do in the evenings. Okay, so this is how you need to remember it. Plain mode in the morning, pilot mode in the evenings. Because it's in the evenings when you're like going to bed, that's when you get all your like um motivation like yeah i'm gonna wake up tomorrow i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do like four hours of work i'm gonna go to the gym all this sort of thing yeah that's what you think in the evening and then when you come to the morning you just go and do it complete brain dead because if you waited until the morning and it's the morning where you decide i'm gonna decide what i'm gonna do i'm gonna be a pilot then your mind's gonna be like you know what actually let's just skip the gym today no i'm not not gonna do that essay today okay so remember that pilot mode in the evening so you need to choose everything you're gonna do in the evening plain mode in the morning Okay, so let me just talk you through this to-do list. This was a to-do list I made on Friday night when I was in pilot mode, deciding objectively what I need to do. There's no emotions, right? Because I'm not doing it now. So it's sort of like I'm giving these instructions to my future self, to my tomorrow self. I'm saying tomorrow at 5 a.m., this is what I need you to do. This is a fact. This is what needs to be done. Because if I decided in the morning, that's not giving instructions to your future self. That's giving instructions to your current self. And why would you want your current self to do like a whole bunch of hard work? You, do, you don't want to do that. Okay, so you've got to give these instructions to your future self. So on Friday, I wrote this, pilot mode. I wrote this to do this. This is exactly what I need to do. Wake up on Saturday, followed it. Okay, so let me, let me just show you how this to-do list sort of um, ties into these three here. Well, first of all, I'm waking up early because I woke up at 5 a.m. Okay, get this done. And in terms of eating the frog, right, the, doing the hard tasks first, I'm doing these hard tasks first, these scripting, the filming. Okay, that's what I'm doing first, otherwise known as deep work, okay? Uninterrupted as well, so I'm not checking my phone, I haven't done any of that stuff yet. I'll probably check my phone, maybe here, but maybe even here. Like, I I can probably do it here because I know I'm not going to get distracted, but like me, me maybe a year ago, me maybe a year and a half ago where I hadn't made my progress in productivity, if I checked my phone here and I had like my phone addiction, I would have been done, because then I would have been like scrolling, I would have got this stuff done. Okay, so because I'm better at it now, I can probably check my phone here, but otherwise it would be here. Okay, so I do the deep work, then I do the easy tasks. So like replying to emails, just sending a couple of messages, sending an email, right, changing a thumbnail. I'll do all that there. 
Okay, so that's how you want to schedule your day. Wake up early, eat the frog, do the hard task, and then pilot versus plane mode. You need to be in pilot mode, deciding what you're going to do the day before, because then it's objective. You're giving those instructions to your future self without emotion. Okay, and then when you wake up in the morning, just follow it. That's why you always need a to-do list. Okay, a to-do list for the following morning. You just follow it completely brain dead. Even if you don't want to do it, you just do it. You have to get that to-do list done. Okay, that is scheduling. I'm going to take a drink now, and then we'll move on to mindset. Hope this video is helpful by the way if it is helpful feel free to leave a like on the video it's a very different video to what i normally do um so obviously i'm normally like specifically just focused on the degree of pension application process this is obviously still related because you need productivity to in order to do all the work to apply but it's obviously slightly different so yeah just a couple of people requested it yesterday so i thought i'd do it see what happens if i've helped at least one person with their productivity then i'm happy so yeah get any value from this video feel free to like Let's get into mindset. A couple of things here, a couple of headings we're going to go through in mindset. Set your own deadlines, delay gratification, motivation, discipline, and wisdom. Okay. We always work to deadlines. This is a fact. Okay. So think about homework. When do you usually do your homework? Say your homework's due on a Friday. When are 99% of people going to do it? It's going to be on Thursday night or even Friday morning. I remember back in the day when I'd literally, I'd be doing homeworks on the bus like and, and my homework would be due in like the first lesson and it's like i'd have to try and write when like the bus had stopped because when the bus was moving it'd be shaking around and everything so i'd try and like wait for it to stop and then like write a couple of words and then do you know what i mean but like sometimes i didn't have time so i just have to write while the bus is shaking and then the teacher's like why is your handwriting so messy i'm like oh yeah um definitely wasn't because i was doing it on the bus okay most people do their homework like that basically last minute if you have like an essay an assignment that sort of thing and it's due in two months you're not going to do anything like no, no one's like getting an essay two months like t deadline in two months and the next day you're spending six hours on it like you're not doing it what is most likely going to happen is in like the week before you're going to do the whole thing okay because we work to deadlines okay we, we don't work not to deadlines okay if there's no deadline we're pr most people aren't going to do it okay this is why you need to set your own deadlines like, this is like a psychological thing utilize it okay just set your own deadline say a cv is officially due for a company like the closing date of it is like the 31st of november okay and it's currently october okay it's like the start of october you're going to procrastinate that and you're not going to do it even though you want to do it you know you should do it you're not going to do it in october you're probably not going to do it the first week of november you're going to do it in the 29th you're literally you're going to do it on the 30th of november that's when you're actually going to do it because that's when the, the thing matters and by the way, that's going to have issues in the degree of pension application process if you go about it like that, because most vacancies close early. So by the time you do it on the 30th of November, they probably close and you've missed your chance. Like with degree of pension, you need to be getting everything, getting everything in as early as possible. So this is this this one in particular, setting your own deadlines, is really applicable to the degree of pension application process. You got to set your own deadline. So in, imagine the same situation: the deadline is 31st of November. It's currently the start of October. You need to write your CV and like fully do your application. Just set your own deadlines psychologically. Tell yourself psychologically tell yourself just, just tell yourself right that the deadline is the 4th of october and, and and actually mean it to yourself like be like the deadline is the 4th of october and then you're, you're getting that psychological thing from the deadline you're going to do it on the night of the 3rd of october okay but you have to make it real you can't just say yeah oh yeah haha it's the 4th of october you have to like convince yourself like you can convince your your mind so many things like anything, if you need to convince your mind something, you just need to com like just think about it and just like tell yourself that it's real. So just tell yourself that the deadline is the 4th of October. That is a fact. And that's going to help you with the motivation to do it on the 3rd of October. Okay. It might not solve it completely, but it's like you're going to be procrastinating less if your mind is convinced that it's 4th of October. Okay. So you need to literally gas. I'm telling you to gaslight yourself. This is probably one of the most powerful things that I learned with like getting stuff done and productivity in your mind is like you can gaslight your mind so easily whatever you need to do just gaslight your mind i'm trying to think of another example where you can gaslight your mind it's like say right now you think that you need instagram like it's an app you need just gaslight your mind into telling you you don't need it like gaslight yourself so much that you forget why you even thought you needed instagram in the first place so do that with these deadlines okay set up a deadline earlier than it needs to be done and that's how you do your cv 
So you, the reason you've been procrastinating on your CV or your personal statement or your application questions is because, oh, yeah, it's due on the 31st of January. No, it, it's due next week. Set your own deadline. You'll be surprised how much you can achieve. Okay, so I'll give you an example. Here's what I did one day in, like, I think it was April. The night before. 10 videos tomorrow or your channel resets. 10 videos. And I'm like, 10 videos. So at this time I was uploading about three times a week. So, like, max I'd film three videos in one day. Max. Right? And then just sort of do it once a week. 10 videos tomorrow or your channel resets. That was the challenge. Okay, guess what I did? I woke up at 3.30 a.m. and I filmed 10 videos. Okay, so using the same things as before, deep work, did I check my phone? No, that was all on D&D, airplane mode, all this sort of thing. Did the deep work, t 10 videos, filmed it all in the morning. So I think it was 3.30 a.m. I think it was by like 10.30 I'd done it. So I think, I'm not sure which ones it was. It might have been one, two, three. I think it was one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. I think it was those ten videos that I filmed in one day, and I thought that was never even possible. Like ten videos in one day, I was used to doing three max, but usually two videos in one day. I did everything in a morning. It's like there's a phrase you can do. You can do more work in a morning than most people do in a week. This is what I did. I did more work in one morning than most people do in a month. And you can do this as well. Most people have probably been procrastinating their CV or their, pers their, their personal statement. Let's just say university because maybe you're applying to university as a backup. A lot of people have been procrastinating their personal statement for like three months. You do realize you could get your entire personal statement done in, the, in, in one morning. A personal statement in the scale of things is not crazy. Okay? It's one page. It's one page of writing about yourself, probably four or five paragraphs. Okay? You could get the whole thing completed in one morning. Something that people have taken months to do, three or four months, they still haven't done it. You could get the whole thing done in the morning. All you need to do is wake up early, lock in, deep work, don't get distracted, and just focus on it. Because if you're writing your personal statement, every five seconds you're checking your phone. Oh, I just got an, a notification from Amazon Prime that there's this like, new film coming out. Oh, I just got this notification from Instagram that, oh, the boys are going here. Oh, the, like, all this sort of stuff. Yeah, of course you're not going to write your personal statement. That's why you look at it for 10 minutes. Like, you would be like, okay, yeah, yeah I'm going to work on my personal statement now. You look at it for 10 minutes. And you're like, oh, no, no, I'll just do it later. And then you're going to do something else because you couldn't focus. But if you set yourself this deadline, do the deep work, don't get distracted, you can do your entire personal statement in one morning. Same, if you, if you haven't even started your CV or cover letter, and you've been procrastinating it, you could do the whole thing, your CV and your cover letter and like whatever, you could do it the whole thing in one morning. Okay, you can do literally what people take three months to do, you can do in one morning when you actually put your mind to it. That's why I put this here. You'll be surprised how much you can achieve. Like it'll, it'll be surprising. You'll be like, I didn't even know that was possible. I've been procrastinating my CV for like six months. I didn't know like what uh, you did. And then, and then you go and like you follow this advice, you go and do it in one whole morning. Okay, this is what happens when you like build up all this, um, all these tactics and techniques I'm talking about in this video. You'll just be so surprised by what you can achieve. Set that deadline in your head and just be like, tomorrow morning, entire CV and cover letter ready. Delay gratification. So you might not have heard this before, so I'll explain this. Instant gratification, that is where you do something you want to enjoy now. For example, scrolling on TikTok. That's going to be enjoyable. Staying at home and watching Netflix rather than going to the gym. That's going to be like more enjoyable. So going to McDonald's and getting like that fast food, like burger sort of thing. Yeah, that'll be enjoyable. Okay, fine. It feels good in the moment. But it's going to have consequences because further on down the line, you scroll on TikTok rather than like doing your, doing your work, doing like your CV or cover letter, doing your like practice interviews or this sort of thing. And then by the time you get to your interview three months later, you haven't done any practice. You do really bad in your interview and you don't get the job and now you're going to university and getting £45,000 of debt. Or instead of going to the gym and watching Netflix, like, yeah, that, that felt good in the moment. But then, like, 10 years later, you're fat. Like, 10, 10, 15, late, 10, 10, 15 years later, you can't even play with your children because they're all running around. You've literally got a hip replacement and you can't move or something. And you, you can't run around for more than 30 seconds without literally getting into an asthma attack or something. Okay, it's like, yeah, you can go and order that fast food. Yeah, it'll feel good in the moment. Three years down the line, when you're getting a bit podgy, it's like, okay. 
because that's what instant gratification is feels better in the moment but it's going to have consequences down the line and it's not going to be good for you down the line delayed gratification this is where in the moment it feels bad okay like you don't want to do it okay so it's like netflix or gym you choose gym like i don't want to do it but i'm just going to do it okay it's like work or go and watch a film or go and scroll on youtube right i'll do the work i'll write the essay i'll write the cv i'll do the personal statement doesn't feel good don't want to do it man but i'm just going to do it okay delayed gratification you get that gratification later that means in 10 years time you're fit and healthy you're with your children 10 years time five years time three years time you're in like you're in crazy athletic shape like looking really good right like five ten years time you you, you got that job like not even that like one one year's time let you think about this in one year you could be starting a degree apprenticeship in one year's time you could basically like it's literally different i've talked about this in different videos completely different life path because you go from forty five thousand pounds of debt and no guaranteed job to twenty thousand pound plus starting salary with yearly pay rises guaranteed job Dif- no, like literally different whole different whole life paths and all you have to do is delay gratification by one year that's all you have to do okay instead of right now over the next couple of months doing the instant gratification of yes i'm gonna not do my cv i'm gonna go out and meet my friends every single day i'm gonna watch films every single day i'm gonna go on tiktok every single day just delay the gratification all those good things just get rid of them for a minimum of like a year less than a year okay until whenever you get your offer or whenever you do your a levels and then you can get all the gratification because now you've got into your degree apprenticeship or now you're in really good shape. Okay. So that's what you can do. Just delay that gratification. Now that might seem a bit extreme to you right now or what delay gratification by a year. <laughs> like that might seem crazy. Okay. At the level I'm at, I'm like happy to delay gratification for like 10 years. Right. But if this is like a new concept, which you haven't heard before, don't worry about 15 years or anything crazy like that. Just, I want you to delay gratification for 24 hours. That's it. Just push it, back, push it back 24 hours. Whatever you want to do. So next time you're working, you're, you're doing your work, whether that's schoolwork, CV, cover letter, practicing application questions, whatever, revising. And then you get a temptation. So you get a temptation. You want to do something. Oh, I don't want to do this work. I want to, I want to go watch a film. Or I want to go play a video games. Yeah, or I want to... I know I should do work, but I feel like just going out. Going with my friends or something. Even though I've seen them like a hundred times, like in the in the past week, I just want to go and see them again. Even though I need to get this work done. Yeah, or I want to like watch this certain thing. I want to scroll on TikTok. Okay, that's fine. Just push it back twenty four hours. Just twenty four hours. Okay, just tell yourself, yep, that's fine. I'll do it tomorrow. Okay, and then just do the work now. So I literally had this exact thing on Wednesday. So on Wednesday, I basically when did I wake up on Wednesday? Yeah, Wednesday, Wednesday was five a.m. 5 a.m. I was doing work again. I was doing the deep work. I started off with the difficult work. I was like filming a course on video interviews, how to excel in video interviews, exact strategies to do in video interviews, how to prepare, how to do your answers. It's part of my coaching program. I filmed that. I filmed a couple of videos. Okay, did the deep work, and I'd basically done a lot of that by about 12 p.m. And it was at 12 p.m. that I just got the desire in my mind, like the temptation just came in. I just wanted to watch a film. I just wanted to go watch Disney Plus because I have like a free trial on Disney Plus, and it's like ending in like two days' time. And I, I literally have a new, like, I've had this, I've had this free trial for Disney Plus and I've watched like three films on it in like a three month free trial. I think I watched like Infinity War, Endgame, and then like Kingsman on Disney Plus. And then I haven't used the free trial. And it's over the past three months, I've kept getting the desire, oh, I want to go on Disney Plus because there's a couple of films I want to watch. Like I want to watch Cars, for example, right? And like Narnia, I want to go watch those on Disney Plus. But every single time I've got this desire, I've just pushed it back. I said, yeah, I'll, I'll go, I'll go watch it later. So it was on Wednesday, I got this desire, I wanted to go watch a film, I think I wanted to watch like Narnia, like The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, at 12pm, and I was just like, no, I'll go watch it, I'll go watch it two hours later, I'll go watch it at 2pm, so I worked for another two hours, and then at 2pm I was like, yeah, no, I'll I'll go watch it at 3pm instead, I worked for another hour, and then again at 3pm it was like, I wanted to watch this film, I was like, yeah, I'll go watch it at 4pm, and it was the same thing, like sometimes it happens like that, sometimes it's like, you can be like, you know what, in 10 years, I want to be able to play with my children, so I'm going to go to the gym. Absolutely fine. Sometimes it works like that. Other times, it doesn't work like that. Sometimes you just got to push it back one hour. That's all you can do. And that's fine. Push it back 24 hours. Push it back one hour. So that's a tactic you can do. It's like, as I said at the start, I do a lot of sport, um, things like running and swimming. It's like when you feel tired in like a 5K race and you've got 3K to go, 
I'm not telling you to go and run the rest of the 3K. Like, say you're 2K in, you've got 3K to go. I am not telling you to run the rest of the 3K. I'm asking you to run 10 more meters. Okay, you go run 10 more meters, perfect. Now I want you to run another 10 meters. Now I want you to run another 10 meters. So when I'm in like a swimming race and I'm hurting and I've got another 100 meters to go, it's not about that 100 meters. It's about do five more strokes, do one more stroke, go two more meters and then you can quit. This is what I tell myself in my head when I'm in pain during these sporting events. You can quit after one more step. You can quit after five more meters. I was in an athletic session like a, I think it was a month ago or so and there was like 12 reps we had to do. After the first one, I was done. I didn't want to do it. So I just told myself, one more. Okay, we're not doing all 12. You're just doing one more. So I did a second one. And then I was like, second one, I'm done. I'm not doing it. Like, I hate, I, I was in physical pain. I hated it. Like, my legs were just gone. And I was like, you know what? Just one more. I did a third one. One more, fourth one. One more, fifth one. That's all it is. Okay, you don't have to be crazy and delay everything. And like, oh, in 20 years time, just delay it one hour. Delay it five minutes. Okay, just delay that gratification. Delayed gratification is the most important thing for you. Okay, quote here from Iman Gadji. I reposted on my Twitter. You can go follow me if you if you want to. Procrastinate, procrastination. I'll procrastinate tomorrow. <laughs> I saw this. This I, I like this one. You'd be surprised how easy you can trick your brain into taking action. So yeah, with, with what I said, it's like if you get a temptation, a desire, just do it tomorrow. Even better than that, it's like if you start procrastinating, just tell yourself just procrastinate tomorrow. Like no problem. No problem. That's fine. Just don't procrastinate now. Just just do it tomorrow. Yeah, it's like absolutely fine if you procrastinate tomorrow. Just don't do it today. Motivation. Let's move on to motivation. Let me just get another drink. This is another part of mindset motivation. Now, I want to do a disclaimer on this one. Because motivation's only going to get you so far. Okay, so you might know a guy called David Goggins, right? And this is like something I've learned a lot from him. And when you go to the gym, everyone has their headphones in. They all listen to music. Yeah, let's like get pumped up to the music. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. But the problem is, what happens when the music stops? And you don't have that motivation. What happens then? Do you just crumble? Can you do the same thing? So that's the thing with motivation. It's good. Yeah, sure. Use motivation as a tool. But it's only going to get you so far. Because there's going to be times when you're unmotivated. Like, to be honest... When you're motivated, you can do any work, like, it's fine, just do the work, you're motivated, it's easy, right? But real discipline is what you need when you're not motivated, because there's going to be times when you're not motivated, okay? You'll have good days where you want to do it, boom. Like, for example, today, to be honest, I was motivated to do it today, so today's been, like, really easy doing this, but I could have had another day where I woke up at 5am, and I was unmotivated, I didn't want to do it, I want to stay in bed, but that's where discipline comes in, that's the discipline to do it when you're not motivated, okay? So I'm going to give you some stuff about motivation, but I just want you to remember this disclaimer that you can't rely solely on motivation. You still need to have that discipline there because there's going to be days when you're not motivated. Okay, so motivation. First things first, phone wallpaper. Phone wallpaper, put something motivational on. Okay, I'm not going to show you mine, but make sure there's something motivational on there. I wouldn't recommend on, on your phone wallpaper putting something like like this this sounds kind of stupid because on their wallpaper everyone puts like 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 their friend or their girl or some like place they went on holiday or that sort of thing but the problem is it just means when you check your phone you want to go do that so say you put on your phone the wallpaper is like you when you're on holiday in spain every time you look at your phone you're going to want to go to spain you're not going to want to focus on the work you need to get done you're going to focus on Spain. Say your wallpaper on your phone, like your home screen, your lock screen, is like you when you were out with your friends and it was like a little selfie you did. Every time you look at your phone, you're going to want to go with your friends. Okay, it's like, for example, the way it would work for me in terms of how I end up getting hooked, it's like, it's like on my wallpaper, if I went and like put a film that I really want to see. Yeah, and if I go and just put that or like a film I really like, Put that on my wallpaper. It means every single time I turn on my phone, I see that film, I want to watch it. Now I'm tempted. Oh, I'm going to go watch that film instead of doing it. Right? So if you phone wallpaper, I would personally recommend, if you're struggling with motivation, don't put something good on there, like something you enjoy. Put on something that motivates you. Okay, so I'm sure you can, like, Google motivational 
like wallpapers or something i've got a whole bunch of like custom ones which i've used over like the past year put them on your wallpaper because then every single time you look at it you see your purpose you see your goal you see your mission you're like yeah let's do this like my wallpaper i really like the ones i've got now because it's like it just locks me in another one is notes around your bedroom so for about the past year i've just had random post-it notes everywhere all over my bedroom i think i've taken i I took them down a couple of months ago because they were they, they were just it, it was so random they were just they were just everywhere so it, i don't have them right now but i basically did have a whole bunch of notes with like motivational stuff stuck up and that just means you're going to see it because you're in your bedroom a lot you're going to see it motivates you boom and the final one is like having a youtube shorts playlist and this one again heavy disclaimer on this one this is like a last resort okay this is an absolute last resort i would not like you don't want to rely on this too much so if i do get into any point where i'm completely unmotivated and i like really do need that motivation i do have a youtube shorts playlist which has like a bunch of shorts i can like this is a very effective one for me i can go on this playlist watch two videos and then i'm locked in bro just because like the mode like because i I've, I've put videos in there which are going to properly motivate me so i can literally just look at two videos boom i'm locked in okay the problem with this is and this is a quote from iman gaji the majority of motivational content is just guilt-free procrastination so the problem with this is okay you're unmotivated you don't want to do the work so you go to youtube shorts playlist where you got some motivational videos you start watching some motivational videos and then you just sit there for two hours watching motivational videos and then you've achieved no work that's just procrastination okay that's just guilt-free procrastination so you can only have this sort of playlist if it's like a 10 second thing that's all this playlist is it's a last resort that you use for 10 seconds if after like 10 seconds you're still not motivated well congratulations you have to get up youtube shorts and you have to do the work anyway that's called discipline okay so let's sort of like hierarchy in terms of what's the ideal situation ideal situation is you're motivated the work's easy fine the next situation is you're not motivated but you go on your youtube shorts within 10 seconds it motivates you so you go and do the work and now you're motivated perfect the next option is you're not motivated you go on your youtube shorts try and motivate yourself it doesn't motivate yourself you're completely unmotivated you do it anyway and that's what you have to do okay and that's about discipline and discipline is like a whole other topic like i could do a whole full guide on discipline i i don't think i will because it's it's, it's too far away from degree apprenticeships i'm trying to at the end of the day i help people get degree apprenticeships this is like a very off topic sort of thing but discipline as i said is discipline is doing it when you're unmotivated and the way you can develop your discipline is things like cold showers waking up early right and when you can consistently do those even when you don't want to it's going to build up your discipline okay by cold showers i mean fully cold turn it straight on boom okay go for a run in the cold and dark like in the winter even winter's coming there's a great opportunity for it go in the morning go in the evening so i i remember there was like a webinar that we had at work probably would have been like 10 months ago something like that and it was like one of like the sort of senior managers person they were sort of doing like a like presentation and it was like sort of safety thing and it was talking about now that it's getting dark if you're going on a run i really hope you're making sure you're wearing high vises um and you're you're like carrying your phone with you you've got sos tracking on there you've got like a headlight strapped to your front and a headlight strapped to your back um because it's all about safety it's very dangerous to be running out there in the cold and dark and i was just listening to that just thinking like when i go for runs in the cold and dark i'm like wearing black like completely black clothing i don't have my phone on me or anything i don't have any lights i'm literally just running i could like literally something could happen i never come back right so that, i just found that funny right but going for a run in the cold and dark that's great for doing your discipline because guaranteed you don't want to do it like when i like winter go for a run even at like 7 a.m on like a saturday it's like you don't want to do it you don't want to be doing that just go do it anyway it will build up your discipline and this is just about keeping your promises to yourself like you just got to build up that discipline you don't want to say i'm going to go to the gym and then not go to the gym because then you're going to lose respect for yourself and you're going to lose that discipline discipline's about you made that promise you're going to do it and then you're going to respect yourself more okay wisdom final ones here these are sort of three quotes of wisdom from someone called first man number one no one is better than you so even if you feel like you're in a certain situation maybe your grades aren't as good as you wanted them to be maybe someone else you feel has better work experience than you maybe you feel like you're not very good at interviews just remember no one is better than you no one does that mean oh you're special you're a king you're a queen no like i'm not saying that but what i'm saying is you don't put don't put yourself down don't say that you can't do this because no one's better than you no one is you can be as good as everyone else 
You just got to work for it. Okay, really remember that no one is better than you. Okay, next one, zero fear of consequences. Here's the thing. If, if you put loads of hard work in and it doesn't, it doesn't work out, like say you work really hard and you end up not getting your grades or not getting a degree apprenticeship, you got to just have that zero fear of consequences. Because if you don't get your degree apprenticeship, you will just go off to university like everyone else does. And then you'll you'll literally have a normal life. Like it, if you don't get your degree apprenticeship, it's not the end of the world. It just means you're going to have a normal life. So there's nothing to be afraid of, because that's what everyone else does. A degree apprenticeship is just a bonus that you can have if you work super hard. But if it doesn't go that way, you just live a normal life. So have zero fear of consequences. Just go for it. Finally, things can't go bad forever. Okay. If you're trying to work on something. And it's really difficult. Things aren't going well. Just remember, it can't go bad forever. It, it can't. So I think it was, it would have been early August. I was having like a, just like a, everything was difficult to do. Um. Yeah, everything was difficult in terms of work and I didn't really want to do it. But I just kept doing it anyway. And I just did it. And now for the past like month or so, I've been in a really good period. The next couple of months going in some deep focus is going well. So it's just about things can't go bad forever. And now there's this story about like this animal. I don't know if this is like a real thing or not, but there's like certain animals which when a storm comes, they'll run away from it, right? And then they end up getting like messed up by the storm. There's another animal which when, a st I can't remember what the animals are, but when the storm comes, they sprint towards the storm. Do you know why? Because it means because they're sprinting towards the storm, they're going to pass through the eye of the storm more quickly. If you're running away from it, it's sort of going to chase you and it's going to stay with you and then it's going to eventually pass you. You're going to be in the storm for ages. But if you run straight at the eye of the storm, you're going to pass straight through it. Yes, it'll be difficult, but you're going to get through it. Okay, things can't go bad forever. Just go for what you want to do. Okay, so if the work is difficult to do, just absolutely send it. Okay, just send it. Get it done. The faster you go for it, the harder you work on it, the quicker, like the bad part of it will end. And the, the quicker the good results will come. Okay, three bits of wisdom for you. If you want to Google first, man, go for it. Cool. So there we go. That's the productivity full guide for you. Covered distractions, scheduling, and mindset. You can use those to level up your productivity. Those are three sort of three broad topics that have worked for me. I'd recommend definitely implementing as much of that stuff as possible. So what do you need to actually do to be productive? Um, what do you need to be productive on to get into a degree apprenticeship? Okay, so specifically just linking this back at the end of the video. Well, you need to be productive in getting work experience, doing online courses, okay, writing your CV, cover letter, applying to lots of companies, practicing assessments, interviews. All of these things here are annoying. Okay, I'll give it to you. They're annoying. You kind of don't want to do them. It's like, would you rather go and see your friends, go and watch a film, go and scroll on TikTok, go and eat food or something, or do these things? It's like, you know what I mean? But you need to be productive to get these things done. If you want a degree of pension, as I said, this video is for serious candidates. If you want to get a degree of pension, you need to do these things. So that's what you need to be productive on. Here's the final actual step. Subscribe. <laughs> that's not actually the final actual step, but if, if you want to subscribe, do go for it. And if you, if you have got value from this video, I appreciate a like just, just to let me know if th these sort of videos are good. Final actual step is plan out what you need to do. Okay? So you know what you need to do. Like you, you, Deep down, you'll know what you need to do. I haven't written my CV. I need to do that. I know I should do an online course, but I haven't got around to it yet. Plan out what you need to do and set a super short deadline. Okay, because maybe it's something you've been procrastinating for a month, a couple of weeks. Remember that thing I said about deadlines? Set a super, super short deadline. And I mean super short. I mean, I mean the kind of deadline which it sounds stupid to say it. Because <laughs> that's what it was for me when I mentioned that deadline before. 10 videos tomorrow or your YouTube channel resets. That sounded crazy. Okay, 10 videos. Some people take a year to do 10 videos. One morning. So set a super short deadline. Whatever it is you've been procrastinating, CV, cover letter, personal statement, some essay, some revision you've got to do. Set a, super short, set, set a super short deadline. Literally, it could be 24 hours from now. Generally, if you're watching this and your thing is like a CV or a cover letter, that's a 24-hour deadline. Trust me. And I mean, like maybe if you're watching this on like, it's the middle of the week and fair enough. But it's like 24 hours on a weekend, you can get that done. Okay, you literally can do that whole thing in a Saturday morning. Saturday morning, CV done. Set that deadline for yourself. Okay, and you can get it done using the techniques in this video. So the things on the phone, do those as I said. Get rid of your phone. Get rid of the social media. Change all the settings. You're not going to get distracted by that. Okay, do the deep work. Do the early morning thing. Do the eat the frog thing so you can use that productivity. 
okay and use those mindset things as well if you need got any questions about productivity any of that sort of thing procrastination anything i didn't cover in this video you do have those questions feel free to leave them in the comments below here's just a list of references people have referenced in this video um i should add david goggins on there as well because i just uh, I, I think i just mentioned him in this video so yeah if, if you want to find out more uh, information about any of the things i've said you can go and sort of have a look at this list here okay so there we go thank you for watching just want one final plug i have released now my coaching program where i'm helping people get into degree apprenticeships if you are interested in that and you want to get more information you can go and click the link in the description thanks for watching i'll see you in a bit peace out take